that uh, achievable. You got to believe they can happen. Okay. Um, if you've never sold more than four, 5,000 in a single week and next week, Hey, I'm going to do 50,000. It sounds good, but man, let's make sure it's something that you really have a game plan in place for, uh, to do it. Otherwise it's just words. Okay. We want it to have, um, have some meaning behind it relevant. Okay. It needs to be relevant to what you're, what you're trying to accomplish, you know, um, and it needs to be results based. There's another R, um, hyphenated word, but still uh, a word, but, um, results based. It needs to be based on what the results that you want to get. And finally, time bound, you know, you can't win a race that does not have um, a finish line, right? So you start, you finish, and there's there's waypoints along the way to kind of check your progress on that. So with that being said, <clears throat> there's a few tools that we use in our business to, to track ourselves. We have um, a auto VPF, as we call it. And again, VPF stands for vision, plan, and follow through. That's kind of a word that we use for our goals because we have the idea of what we want to accomplish. Um, and then we plan it. We take it from the ether uh, and put it onto paper from the abstract to the concrete, uh, which makes it more real. And then where the rubber really meets the road is the follow through. OK, um, and we track our metrics. We talked about that in a previous video our hours, our demonstrations. So we know things like our hour to demo ratio. We know our closing percentage. Those are very key things to know because when you want to sell, uh, if you want to cash flow a thousand bucks, it's really easy to reverse engineer that to, okay, I need $1,667 of commissions. And for that, I need to sell $4,552 of premium. And to do that based on my average transaction, I need five transactions. And since I close one out of every five presentations, I need Five times five is 25 demonstrations. And it looks like I get a demo every hundred, uh, every hour and 40 minutes, every 100 minutes. So it's going to take me 42 hours uh, to get that. Okay. The math may not be perfect on that, but, but trust me on that one. When you can reverse engineer it to the most controllable thing, which is going to work, you know, getting yourself out the door. Uh, as they say, some for salespeople, sometimes the hardest door to, to get in, uh, or the hardest door is the car door. And when you know specifically what you're going to wanting to accomplish, it's a lot easier to get that car door open and get out there and go, go see the, see the people. So, um, we also have a quarterly VPF, which is really all 13 weeks of a quarter and what we want to accomplish each week. Okay. Um, back to the, um, the auto VPF, that's where we actually can plug in our closing percentage, our average transaction size, our hour to demo ratio. And we put our, uh, after we have all that data put in there, we just put in what we want to cash flow and it does all the math for us and tells us exactly how much controllable effort we need to put in to achieve that sales goal and cash flow goal. So it's pretty, pretty neat. Uh, we take that and then transfer it over to a quarterly goal. And in that quarterly VPF form, we actually can have not only personal sales goals, but we can add in team sales goals, recruiting or what we want our team to produce. Um, and we can also track our progress here as a tracking feature. So if you have a goal set to work 42 hours this week and you put in um, 44, great, you exceeded your goal. If you had 39 hours, and hey, that tells me I'm three hours shy and I need to make up those hours somewhere over the next 12 weeks in order to have a, um, a fair shot of, of hitting my, my financial goals. So pretty important. So um, got some great tools. You'll be exposed to all of them, but wanted you to know about them because guys, this is the deal. Um, I learned from a, uh, had a mentor named Jim McEacher and you may have heard about him in a previous video. I think Kyle talked about him, but, um, Jim was the CEO of the company I worked for, uh, for four years prior to my career here at Globe Life Family Heritage Division. And Mr. McEacher introduced me to the idea of a goals notebook. You know, people, so most people have heard of a vision board, dream board. Okay. This is that same idea, but put into a notebook, a little more portable. You can kind of take it with you. And this is actually a goals notebook that I put together in 1997 when I first heard about it. It's pretty old. It's pretty tattered. It says goals and vision and results in advance. And it's really cool. It's got the common denominator of success right here at the beginning. Um, it's got some articles on goals, uh, which I like to review every now and then. Um, be a millionaire. That was a pretty cool goal. Something I put in there back in the late nineties. Um, there's actually a list of what I want as of October of 1997. So this is, um, more than 20 years old. It's pretty exciting, uh, coming up on 25 years old, but in the short term was become debt free and how much it, 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 I needed to do, be able to do that, uh, to get a new used sport utility vehicle and how much I was going to willing to pay for that. Um, 
take up skydiving, you know, vacation, nice furniture. There was pretty, some of these things were a little bit vague, but some of them were very specific. And then long-term, own a house, uh, get an engagement ring. Um, didn't even have a girlfriend at that time, but I knew I was going to at some point and probably need to save up for it. Start a college fund for two children that I didn't have yet, but plan on having at some point in the future. A new computer and printer and modem um, and a nice vacation. And oddly enough, and there's lots of pictures. Every time I uh, will fly, I like to just take time and look through uh, the pictures. And some of these are kind of our group and different things that we've done. Um, it's like steroids for your career, goals. Um, Machu Picchu, um, going to Tuscany, um, South America, just places that I wanted to go. Uh, things I'd like to have, some pretty cool uh, ideas, vehicles, computers. I like watches. That's kind of a, kind of one of my things here. And so it was oddly enough, a quick story about this is back in when I started my career here um, with Globe Life, Family Heritage Division, um, I moved and I packed all my earthly belongings up and put them in a storage unit. And it was there and, and then that got moved again. And so basically I found this goals notebook and I had not looked at it for a good solid four years. And I found it, I said, oh, I remember this thing. And I just started flipping through it. And it was amazing of how many of these items that were in here that had come to fruition over the previous four years, even though I hadn't looked at this. I had spent so much time looking at it and developing it over the previous years that it was kind of burned into my memory. You know, it was there. And it was amazing to take things from the front of the notebook that I wanted and transfer them to the back of the notebook and say, man, that happened, you know? And a couple ones that are pretty cool were the engagement ring, that had happened, you know? Got married and I grew up. Um, and then a trip to Hong Kong, of all the random places in the world to go, I uh, pulled out wanting to go to Hong Kong, China, and actually had gone to Hong Kong literally about six months before starting this career. So um, just a little piece on guys, you get what you picture, and the more vivid that you can paint that picture and the more you can keep it in front of you uh, in the most important hours, the more likely you are, you are to have that vision become a reality. So a little bit on goals with me, and I look forward to working through your goals with you both short-term and long-term as we develop a, a great partnership. Have a great day. Awesome. Guys, uh, takeaways. What was something that maybe you guys learned from that uh, that maybe you didn't already know? Man, I like your book um, that has all the things listed out, uh, your goals, well, the common denominator of success, having having those goals right in front of you with the pictures. You know, that's why we show people things because, uh, you know, pictures do add impact. It kind of keeps you on point. Uh, that was something that really stood out to me. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Anybody else? Not, not only like that book, the book was amazing of having the pictures and all, but also just knowing in your mind, knowing that you can achieve those goals to believe it, like to actually believe that you can achieve the goals that you set and not just throw a number out there or just, say, oh, if I get close to it, just believe it. I like that aspect. Yeah, um, thank you for that, Brian. Guys, we get, what we, we get what we look for. We get what we focus on. If we focus on what's wrong, we're gonna get more of what's wrong. If we focus on uh, what's right, and, um, and, and we, we, will, we are more likely to get what's right, if that makes sense. If we focus on what we don't want, we're probably going to get what we don't want. Uh, we focus on the things we do. We're more likely to uh, to get those. But guys, yeah, this is the this is the notebook, a, a picture of it that I was pulling up, and this is that page that I was uh, talking about. And it is it's amazing how <clears throat> this July will be 18 years ago that I sat down and typed this up. This would have been my halfway through my second year with with Globe Life Family Heritage Division. And a lot of things have changed since then, uh, but it's interesting to just go down this list. Now, granted, and I'll share this with you guys, um, the whole have 250 capable salespeople in the capital division. A couple things about that. We're not called the capital division anymore. That's what I called the team back 18 years ago. We're, we were now uh, protect one family. And then very recently we've gone to the Davenport agency uh, to kind of get more in line with, with corporate. But uh, 250 capable salespeople. We we don't have anywhere close to 250 
people on the roster at all. Uh, we've recruited that many over the years, um, but that's and that's OK. Um, um, we're still OK financially as a family in the Davenport house without 250. We've got a whole lot closer to 50 uh, between the Davenport and the Schneider agencies right now. Um, but that's OK. That's just something we're working on. Help those people generate 50 million dollars in annual sales. Well, guys, between the Schneider and Davenport agency this year, we may do five million instead of 50 million. So those were those were some pretty big stars goals. And I've fallen way short on those. And that's OK. OK. Um, you know, have a fulfilling personal life centered around my wife and my, my you know two kids at most. Guess how many kids I've got? Two. Um, have Leslie staying home if she wants to. Leslie stopped working uh, prof professionally two months before our first child was born 15 years ago. Uh, so that that would 100% became a reality. She hasn't worked outside the home in 15 years. Um, you know, coach one or two of my second graders athletic teams. And that would be uh, as of the 2006. Well, um, on due date, 4-15-06. I don't know what that can't read that really well, but I've coached many of Jack's uh, baseball teams, even coached uh, Ava when she was not gymnastics, but when she was doing t-ball and, you know, little, little kid, uh, little kid games. Um, they've, they've since far outpaced me with their, their knowledge and their, their respective sports now, but uh, be able to take my family on a one week vacation once a quarter. We don't always do that, but, but we could, should we want to. Uh, own a 10,000 square foot home. Once I really went into a 10,000 square foot home and realized how large that is, I, I, mar I marked it down to eight. And then when I really found out what 8,000 square foot homes cost, I, I put it down to five. Five is plenty big. Um, and probably in North Carolina we'll, we're, we're, where we will retire. Uh, guess, where I, guess where my 5,000 square foot house is? It's in Raleigh in North Carolina. Uh, own a vacation home at the beach. That's happened. Um, you know, command a half million dollar annual income, accumulate two million net worth, um, continue saving at least 10% of my income. Um, I think I'd initially made that 15%, but then realized that was difficult. So I changed it to 10. 10 is not bad. Um, I think since then we've adjusted back to 15, but own outright or, or, or with a partner, five or more rental properties. Um, <clears throat> and that's pretty much the number. Um, and um, Keeping Jeff Dobines, who's actually the president of, uh, of, of Southwestern uh, Financial Services, uh, busy managing uh, my wealth. Well, I don't necessarily use Jeff Dobines, but, um, but I use a different person, and, and that person definitely helps me out. So, guys, it's amazing how many things, again, 18 years later, are absolutely have happened and are happening when you when you when you put it down on paper. Um, I was watching a. I believe it was Emmett Smith that was on the NFL network and they were doing a bio. They do always do that on players. And he was pulling out notebooks he had from when he was back in high school and he set goals and his whole, his, his, his wife, his, his kids, they all said the same thing at different times. It's just a dream unless you write it out. It's not a goal until you put it on paper, you know? And that was really, that was really, really cool um, to hear, uh, to hear that. So I wish I had the video to play for you, but, um, I want to share with you guys a, a piece right here that was in an email that I sent out to you guys. Um, well, I'll send it out to you guys on March 11th. So, um, whatever, well, about a week ago. And I, I hope you, I hope you read it. hope you read all the emails I send to you. I try to make sure that there's uh, valuable stuff in there. And I want to share with you the attachment that was, that was inside and it's called, you're someday going to be what you're now becoming. Um, Kyle actually addresses this in one of our bomb bomb videos that we send out to, to new, new recruits that are just now that are done and are being being sent out. The one that you just saw in goals, that's one that goes out to our new hires as well. Um, so these are pretty important things. But Jim was actually a mentor of mine back in the early uh, the late 1990s uh, from 97 through early 2001. I worked with the Tom James company and Jim was the CEO back then. And he wrote this piece and Jim was the one that actually introduced me to the idea of a goals notebook and a goals playoffs. Uh, Mr. McEachin was a very wealthy man, but he would have playoffs for different things that he wanted. Um, and I know uh, one was uh, one year, he always had a Rolls Royce was something that he always had there. And he would have his goals playoffs to see what he would get. And the Rolls Royce never won, but it was always in there. Uh, so could he have bought a Rolls Royce? Of course the guy could have. 
Um, but he lived well below his means. He also had a rule that never buy a house that was more, that was cost more than one year of your salary. So there were plenty of years that he was living in, you know, homes that were less than a hundred thousand dollars in, in, in value. And I remember hearing that going, woof, that's hardcore. But, um, but he did that. So let me just share this with you guys real quickly. And then I'm going to share with you a quick piece on, on, on goals to, and then we'll wrap things up. But uh, Jim writes, one of the most sobering thoughts I've ever been confronted with is this, what you are going someday going to be, you are now becoming, you are now this moment, exactly what you've been in the process of becoming all your life. Are you now the person you dreamed about becoming? If you'd written down several years ago, exactly the type of person you wanted to be now, what kind of person would you have described? How close are you to becoming that person? What kind of person do you want to be a year from now or two years from now or five or 10 or 20? Right now, you're in the process of becoming the person you will be in a year or two or five or 10 or 20 years from right now. The habits you have now will determine the kind of person you'll become unless you change those habits now. What attitude will you, would you like to have someday? The attitude you have now is a good indication of the attitude you will have someday unless right now you begin to develop a new kind of attitude. If you're not now doing the things you need to do to become what you want to become, what makes you believe you ever will? Do you have situations or circumstances that are preventing you from becoming what you want to become? Those situations and circumstances will pass, but they will be replaced by a new situation or new circumstance. If you want to become a better or different kind of person, you better get started now. You cannot wait for situations and circumstances that are just right. Have you ever told yourself someday I'm going to begin saving money on a regular basis? Are you saving right now? If you're not now, you probably never will uh, unless you begin now. It will never be any easier, even if your income doubles or triples. It will never be any easier, even if you someday earn 10 times as much as you do now. Saving money regularly has little to do with income, and it relates to the decisions that you make. If you want, and, and we actually read an article on Monday about that, that it has very little to do, savings has little to do with your income level. It has everything to do with your habits and your decisions. If you want to develop a good savings account, you better begin now. In all probability, it's now or never. Do you plan to have good work habits someday? Do you have good work habits now? If not, you probably never will unless you're willing to begin to develop them right now. What you're someday going to be, you are now becoming. Maybe you've said, someday I'm going to set aside some time to read the Bible and pray every day. Why someday? If you're not willing to set aside time now, you probably won't do it someday. If you plan to ever begin, you better form the habit today. Many years ago, Spencer Hayes asked me, Jim, what kind of person do you want to be in five years? What kind of husband do you want to be? What kind of father do you want to be? I answered Spencer by telling him the kind of person I wanted to become. I told him that I wanted to become as a father and as, and as a husband. Spencer then told me one of the most frightening things that I've ever heard. He said, what you're someday going to be, you are now becoming. Then he asked me, if you're not willing to do those things now, what makes you think you ever will? I resolved then to begin doing those things, which would enable me to become the person, the husband, and the father I wanted to become. We're faced with a choice. We can either begin to do those things that will enable us to become what we someday want to become, or we can learn to live with regret. I would prefer to do even those very difficult tasks that will enable me to become what I want to become than to live with regret. Every time you do those things that you know you ought to do, you feel good about yourself. When you, don't, when you do not do what you ought to do, you feel bad about yourself. Guys, this is straight out of common denominator of success. You know, um, successful people are influenced by pleasing results, and they're willing to form the habits of doing things they don't like to do to get the results they want, where failures are more influenced by pleasing methods, and they're willing to just be okay with the results they can get by doing things that they like to do which again, cutting off early, stop, stopping late, doing three demos or four instead of six, not memorizing your sales talk. It's certainly easier than taking the time to memorize it and use it, right? Not bothering to use rebuttals. That's pleasing, but the results oftentimes are not very pleasing. Either way, you're in the process of becoming what you're someday going to be. 
Albert Gray said, the secret of every human who's ever been successful lies in the fact that he or she formed the habit of doing things failures don't like to do. Of course, the successful people don't like to do them either, but their purpose gets them to do it. To become uh, what we want to become requires forming a habit of doing the right things, the things failures don't like to do. The best time to begin forming a habit is right now. Okay. Um, you can choose the hard right or the easy wrong, right? Um, we are now deliberately and consciously choosing to become what we want to someday be, or we're unconsciously making the choice. Either way, we're in the process of becoming what we are someday going to be. King David of the, in the Old Testament deliberately sought God's will in most facets of his life and became a great man. He apparently did not consciously decide on what kind of father he'd become. As a result, his children were the cause of much sorrow. One of his sons gathered an army to overthrow him. Another son raped his own sister. Uh, the son who committed the rape was murdered by another of David's sons. You're now in the process of becoming the person you're someday going to be. I've had the privilege of hearing many outstanding success stories. The achievers of those successes invariably stated, I decided to. Immediately after deciding, they took action that enabled them to begin achieving what they, that they decided to do. It's through action that we become. Matter of fact, I think that was action was the theme of the last train war uh, that we that we just uh, that we just had is act. And guys, it's been said if you're having a tough time, act. You've heard the term "fake it till you make it." It's so much easier to act your way into positive thinking than it is to think your way into positive acting. So just the action always precedes the thought. Uh, this world is littered with failures. These people did not intend to become what they are. They intended to achieve great things. They intended to become much more than average, but they waited for the right set of circumstances. What are people waiting for? Children are waiting until they finish school. Adults are waiting until they get promoted. Middle-aged people are waiting until they can retire. Many are waiting for circumstances to be normal. In the process of waiting, they're becoming what they're someday going to be, even though it's not what they intended to become. Life doesn't wait. You are right now becoming what you're someday going to be. What you're doing right now or what are you doing right now to become what you want to someday become? Losers don't intend to become losers. They become losers while waiting for circumstances to get right. Winners don't wait. They do what it takes to become what they want to become. They do it now. And um, God rest his soul. Mr. McEachin passed away back in 2011 of, uh, of cancer, um, which took his life. He was an amazing uh, individual. I believe he made it to age 80. 80 or 81. Um, just an awesome deal. Guys, any any comments on what you're someday going to be, you're now becoming? I'd love to hear. Hey, Vance, it's Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. Hey, it's funny that you said this because back in 2010, I wrote down a similar thing to myself and I found it two weekends ago. Um, I hadn't seen it in about seven or eight years. But I would say about 70 to 75% of the things that I had wrote down in 2010 by 2020, I had achieved. It was um, quite remarkable to read over those 11 pages. So, yeah, I, everything you said this morning, it really hit home. And I was actually going to do that today, rewrite my next decade's goals. That's awesome, Patrick. Thank you for sharing that. Van, hey, this is Mary Lou. Um, I loved all of this, but one thing that really resonated with me as well is in my 20s, I was definitely a star goal setter. And as I've gotten older, I found for me, it's more motivating to be a moon goal setter. Um, so just to look at that change and that shift and even starting in this business um, with this career change, you know, for me, um, that was really helpful to hear because I'd never heard that that difference between the moon and the and the stars so thanks for sharing that absolutely i'm glad that was uh, impactful well guys um i was going to share this with you but we're running a little bit late on time so i'll just forward it to you it's queued up as, as if i haven't sent it but i thought i did but um it's uh the title is q2 is coming in hot and it's got a little piece on being a, uh, a Zig Ziglar piece on the difference between being a meaningful specific or just being a wandering generality and the value of, of having, of setting and of using uh, goals. 
guys, the, the final thing that I wanted to share with you guys today was, was this. This is a um, this is a screenshot, and I'll and I'll say this too. Um, I have Nicole go in and make a couple of slight adjustments. Uh, one of the adjustments is up here in the um, in the renewal contract. It's uh, the third option for three percent is 0.24, and that should be 0.27. If you missed Monday, um, you may have not heard, but our renewals uh, based on the last 10 to 15 years of data added to the the company's initial 12 to 15 years of data tells us that our renewals are actually staying on the books about 50% stronger than we initially thought. So we used to use 0.06 as our renewal factor. It's now 0.09, which is, uh, which is a 50% increase, which is very exciting to see. Um, very exciting to see. But um, guys, I, I just plugged in here, this is a sample. And this is, the, this is step one. Also the other change that Nicole's making is we're gonna have totals. So she's making these columns that have numbers in here total. So you'll know the total amount of cash flow you'll have over those 13 weeks when you hit your goal. You'll know the total GAP that you hit over those 13 weeks or how many families you protected, uh, how many demos you needed, how many hours are needed. And also knowing guys, how much wealth you truly created, you know, because you're only getting a 60% advance over here, guys. This first column over here, this is your cash flow and it's nice, but guys don't ever think for a half a second that what you see in your bank from the work you do this week is all you're getting. As long as you stick around, you're going to get almost you're going to get almost as much. And for some of you, even more, it's about 50 percent, depending on your renewal percentage. As your renewal percentage grows, um, that means that you're getting even more on the back end. OK, for some of you guys that have been around for a while and are up to a 50 and three contract, you're going to get about 55 to 60 percent more over the next 19 years than you get in your in your initial advance. For those of you that are brand new with the one percent renewal, you're going to get about another if you have a thousand on fifteen hundred dollar um, upfront, you're going to get uh, about another sixteen seventy five. Even on a uh, on a point one eight, that is two percent renewal. You're going to get a you know you're going to get another sixteen hundred seventy five dollars in renewal. So uh, fifteen hundred dollars of cash flow, you really made two thousand and fifty of actual first year commissions. You're just going to get the back end five hundred and fifty in months eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve as the client makes those payments. Your first seven months are that's, that's your sixty percent advance. Okay. The 19 year renewals is another $1,125. That's what's gonna come in in years two through 20 from the work you did that week, okay? So again, while you're seeing $1,500 in your actual checking account, you're making $3,175. $1,500 you're seeing now, $1,675 you'll see over time. And guys, don't think for a second because it's not in your checking account today that it's not real. It's 100% real, I can guarantee you. Okay, I promise it is. So guys, what I wanted to share with you though, is taking this, <clears throat> this tool, that's step one, okay, is, 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 is making goals. Step two, guys, is tracking goals. And the, the, the one shortfall that this piece has is there's no place to track it week over week. <clears throat> guys, this is my, um, my VPF that I use for uh, the organization, okay? That's uh, Q1, so this, this person here, let me just slide this over here so we can see both of them. So this is, here's this, hold on one second, there we go. There's the screen shot right there. The way to properly use this tool, guys, is to take the first one. Now, once you figure out based on your metrics, based on your closing percentage, your hour to demo ratio, and your average transaction, those are three key factors you need to know. Then you come over here and you would go to Q2, personal, okay? See these tabs down here at the bottom? You've got Q1 personal, Q1 team, Q2 personal, Q2 team. So you would go in here under Q2 personal and put in your plan, $6,250. That's the plan for next week, which is week one of the quarter. If you're following this person's deal, the next week would be 8333. Enter. The next week, 4167. You're going well. Where, that's a random number. Where are you coming up with that? That's what this person, you know, we'll call this person uh, Agent A, would need to sell to cash flow a thousand dollars. Okay, based on a forty percent contract, based on a thousand dollar transaction, twenty percent. Well, based on a forty percent contract. Okay, so uh, week four. This is presidential performance week. This agent says, I'm going to cash flow 2,500 bucks and I'm going to write my first Eagle. That's 10,417. Boom. Right there. Guys, these are specific. 
and they're also very measurable. Guys, the same goes for demos. So with this person, you can see what they need week to week for demos. In order to make 62, uh, sell 6250 based on a 20% closing percentage, this person would need to sell do 31 demos. So you plug it in there, guys. Okay, next week, 42. Next week, 21. Next week, 52. I'm only gonna do the first month, guys. <clears throat> now, hopefully this person can actually set up an enrollment or two for presidential performance week. Hopefully you are setting up an enrollment or two or three or four for presidential performance week, which is just four weeks away. Uh, so that, that raises your closing percentage, guys, when you have enrollments. Uh, I think we all know that we close a bigger percentage uh, when we do an enrollment in a business than we do when we're just walking in and cold calling. Um, however, you got to walk in and cold call or warm call those businesses to set up the enrollment. So um, set, up, set them up. As far as uh, the, uh, and actually I screwed this up. <clears throat> I meant to put the NAP over here. Someone, if you guys ever see me making a mistake, feel free to let me know. But the, the NAP is right over here. Four one six seven and ten thousand four seventeen. So this person would need that's their that's their plan, and then their hours would need it would be over here. Forty seven hours, um, sixty three hours. Okay, I'm going right off this column right here. Thirty one hours, uh, and on the train more based on closing 20% based on a demo every hour and a half, this person would need 78 hours to get 52 demos to close 10.4 transactions to sell 10,417 in premium. Now guys, this is the difference between this on the right and this on the left is once the week comes and goes, you need to, you need to track what you actually did. So when you work 49 hours that week, you plug it in. And it tells you that you're two hours ahead year to date. The, the following week, when you work 57 hours, uh, you're, you're, you're six hours short. It says, okay, now I'm actually four hours behind based on that. So it gives you real time exactly where you are on each of your items. Does that make sense? So, um, you know, when you hit your goal, 31 spot on next week, um, it's, it's zero because you're exactly on your goal. If you hit 44 demos the next week, it'll tell you right here that you're two ahead of your goal quarter to date, okay? And then based on what you what you actually sell, what you have a net premium, guys, net premium. And understand, net is not what you sell. Net is what you sell, which is also known as gross, is, is, is what you sell gross minus cancel at issue. So it's minus anything that, there's two different reports. There's the gross report and there is the net report. If you have no cancellations, they're the same, okay? If you do have cancellations in the previous 30 days, you may sell 7,000 gross, but if you have 700 of it canceled from previous weeks, then you'll end up with 6,300, which that's what would go right here, your actual net numbers, okay? Next week you come in, let's say you sold 7,500. You go from being $50 ahead to minus 783. So you're a little bit behind. Guys, when you know you're a little bit behind, you can make adjustments. Okay, I'm gonna need to make this up a little bit. You don't abandon your, 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 your income goal for the quarter based on a slow week. You look at that and you say, where can I make up that shortfall in the next in the coming weeks? And you may have to add some hours and add some demos to add some sales and that's okay. Um, over here, guys, you can put whatever you want to on these columns right here, whatever you feel like is valuable. Um, I think field recruiting, is pretty valuable. So I would I would encourage you to have at least two or three field recruits each week. You know, on train mores, heck, bump it up to five. Okay, and then you go and follow through and, and whatever you did during the course of that week, if you only had one, then put it in there and you know that you're a little bit behind. <clears throat> if you're not tracking it and you don't know you're a little bit behind, guys, there's a good chance you're not gonna do anything different to make up for it or even worse, you might just continue just getting one or zero, okay? And you won't be growing your business, okay? Um, referrals would probably be another great thing to track. If you if you're want to get more referrals, track uh, on, a, on a weekly basis how many you're getting. And I would encourage you, if you're getting currently getting five referrals a week, I wouldn't goal set to get seven or 10. I mean, make it a point, get up 30, 
40, 50. Um, guys, we have people that consistently get 40 to 50 to 60 week in and week out. I would challenge you uh, to raise your, to level up, get better at doing that. And when you follow through and you see that you only got 23, no, okay, that, I need to make this up somewhere. So guys, it's a great tracking mechanism. That's for, that's for your personal. And uh, of course you have Q, Q, uh, Q2 team. These are my goals set for each week for submitting agents, uh, weeks one through 13, the premium weeks one through 13 and the plan on, on, for recruiting as well. Uh, and I'll keep up with the recruiting pipeline with people as they, as they submit. Um, so these are based on last year's Q2 um, and 20% growth. And then I simply round up from there. That's how I do on submitting agents and that's how I do net premium. And one, one is always the goal for each week uh, on recruiting. <clears throat> I will actually share this with you guys. This was um, something that, uh, so Q, Q, uh, Q1 team. You know, um, there are reports that come out every week that tell us exactly how many submits, how many, how much our premium was. This, these are my estimations as of the weekend. Uh, however, when the, when the real numbers actually do come out, um, and they actually came out yesterday on Tuesday, hold on one second. And you guys have, have access to these all, all in your, your uh, family heritage reports. You can go in and very quickly look and see how many submits you had. You know how big your team is and, and who, uh, who sells. And you know how, um, here we go, progress report. So um, so oh, here we go. This is, this is the one that we use for uh, for agency owners, but I can look on this one and say, um, okay, so this past week, increase this a little bit. We had 13 submits. Uh, a year ago, we had 13. Last week, we had 13, zero growth. So 13 it is. Um, uh, a year ago, we did 44,407. Last week, we did 42,673. Okay, so those are the two metrics and we had one new person submit business. So we did have a recruit. So I'm gonna go in here and put in 13 and 42,673. Um, so 13, it wasn't 14 as we initially thought. And it was significantly less than what we had 42,673. And you'll see this 82,603 is going to change a little bit. It's gonna actually, um, that'll decrease because we're not going to be 8,000 ahead or 82,000 ahead. We're going to be only 75,000 ahead. So we lost some ground about 11,000 and change over what I'd hoped we would do last week. I wanted to do 54,000. We did 42. Uh, the goal for this week that I set for my business is 11 submits based on a year ago, having nine that particular week and 46,000 based on having roughly 41,000 ish, um, a year ago, that was 20% growth and, and rounding up. So hopefully that helps guys, but this is the tool and, and I'm working with Nicole to kind of have a, be able to send out one of these and have them together. But as of right now, they are two separate tools, but use this initial first one to create your goals based on, based on what you need the income for. And remember guys, specific is terrific. Okay. Not bills, but the mortgage or the credit card bill or the, the, the car payments are due. Uh, whatever specifically is due a couple weeks out, be working for that this week. When we're when we're a meaningful specific and not a wandering generality, uh, life is so much better and we get so much more done. But then also, guys, once you get these numbers, transfer these numbers here on this sheet on the left over to the one on the right. And then week by week, guys, you got to track yourself. You got to pull out the reports and put it in there and know if you're ahead or know if you're behind. <clears throat> like right now, guys, I know going into this week, 26, uh, I'm 26 submits for the quarter behind on where I wanted to be. Okay. So I know that I got to make those up somewhere in Q2, three and four. Okay. I got some, we got some work to do. That's going to happen through recruiting. I know that we've got to recruit more people and have a bigger roster to catch up on those submits because in Q2, let's see here, it was one at 160 in Q1. It was only 149 in Q2. So that's a wonderful opportunity because last year we were dealing with COVID initially, okay? And our submits dropped, our sales dropped somewhat. 
318 is the goal from the, a year ago. First quarter goal was, um, excuse me, first quarter goal was 384. So again, we've got a wonderful opportunity. We can make up uh, maybe all 26 uh, submits by adding just two per week in a 13 week quarter. Um, check this out. If I add two to each of these, 12, 12, 14, 12, 12, 16, 13, that'll catch up and we'll be ahead by 26 by the end of the quarter, which will have us breaking even going into the second half of the year. I know that with personal, with sales, we're actually uh, ahead by 75,000, which feels good. Uh, I also know that that's going to be a temporary thing if we don't fix this recruiting part over here. The goal was 12 in the first quarter. We've currently got uh, seven and we should have two more people who are uh, submit business this week. Uh, so we should finish with nine, which will be a three, a three deficit. I'm not sure why 12 minus seven equals four. I think it's five, but um, that might be a little glitch in the system that I need to address with Nicole as well. But um, Guys, any any questions on how to use this? Guys, this is something that um, if you don't get it, that's okay. Pick up the phone and call someone. Call Kyle. Call me. Call your direct manager. But let's not say I don't understand it, so I'm going to ignore it. Uh, because guys, your goals won't stand for being ignored. Okay, they're gonna you're gonna hit them or miss them whether you're paying attention or not. And you're a heck of a lot more likely to hit them if you are paying attention. And if you uh, use them as a roadmap for your quarter. And as you check on the waypoints, if your goal is to get to California and after three weeks, you're, um, you're, you're in Minnesota, you know that you're, you're off track. You're heading into Canada. You need to bring it back and head west or southwest and stop going north. And this is your roadmap. So we got to check week by week to make sure that we are heading in the right direction and then make the proper adjustments. So guys, thank you for being on today. Um, you could probably tell goals is a big passion of mine. And I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one session with you. If you would like that, just, just text me, just call me, just let me know. Um, as you know, what you need work on probably a little bit better than, than I would, um, with 50 plus of you. So just let us know here to help, but these definitely need to be, uh, set in stone and ready to rock and roll before 8 a.m. next Monday morning. And I would challenge you, these are a lot better if you put in 20, 30 minutes each night. And if you just try to wake up at 6 a.m. and just throw a bunch of stuff on the paper before 8 a.m. on Monday morning. Um, so, guys, thanks for being on again. Have a great day. Uh, it's hump day. Let's go do something today that our future uh, selves will thank us for. Have a great thanks, day. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm.